what's the scariest time of the year? It's not New Year's. When you look in the mirror and realize how far you still are from last year's resolutions. It's not Halloween with its zombies and scary clowns. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not even Thanksgiving with the threat of a dry turkey and an even greater threat of judgmental relatives. I was like, family coming over. (laughs) Nope. The scariest time of year is often employee review time. When you sit one-on-one with another person to talk about their accomplishments or lack thereof. I'm Doug Kaufman with Shop Owner Magazine. Welcome to SOS Shop Owner Solutions. Speaking of scary, we're exploring some of those nightmares that today's shop owners face. Those 3 a.m. panics, the things that wake you up in the middle of the night or maybe keep you from going to sleep in the first place. This episode is brought to us by Protractor, the premier shop management solution for multi-bay and multi-location shops. With dozens of integrations, linear parts and labor pricing, and great stability, it's no wonder that Protractor has some of the most loyal customers in the industry. Effortlessly manage all aspects of your shop operations with its powerful, easy-to-use cloud-based solution. Visit protractorsoftware.com slash podcast to learn more. If you mention this podcast, you'll receive one month free. Our guest today is Brian Bates with Eagle Automotive and five locations in Littleton, Colorado. My partner here in the studio is Vic Tarasik from Shop Owner Coach. Now, Vic, I'll be honest. It can be tough to do a review because the usual expectation is often, you know, just looking back on where they need to improve. Mm-hmm. It, is that really the best way to look at employee appraisals? Not at all. Not at all, which is why we have an expert with us today. So a lot of times, you know, a shop, shop owners will steer away from employee appraisal either because they don't know how to do one, they've had a, a bad experience in the past, or they don't understand the value of them. So with Brian here today, we're going to talk about how he's used appraisals to propel his team to superstars and has expanded his shop. Great. I don't think Brian focuses on the negative. I think he focuses on the future. Brian, Brian, welcome today. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate you being here. So <clears throat> let's start at the beginning of how you approach an appraisal. What's your, what's your overall thought process? How do you do it? And what can you convey to a shop owner who's listening? Well, you, you know, I think the, um, the, the biggest difference or, or maybe the mindset that we use when we're um, looking at a performance review is that it really isn't a performance review for us. It's a coaching session and it's a, uh, it's a career um, conversation where we talk about where their careers are currently and uh, where they want to go and um, how well they're, uh, they're tracking to get there and also how we fit in the, in the picture as a company. So the, the mindset is not, um, reviewing their performance, not reviewing um, what what, um, people are um, doing wrong or or what they're doing uh, right on a technical level, but it really does come up to more of a a strategic level as far as coaching. And, And of course, everything that they do on a daily basis, the behaviors, tie into how well they're going to achieve their goals. And if we've done our job right as, as, a, as a company, um, my corporate team, if we've done what we need to do, then we've hired people who align with our values and who align with our goals. And, um, and so that, that review does turn into a two-way conversation. How, how well are you doing at helping the company and how well are we doing at helping you achieve your goals? We had the conversation just minutes ago, and a statement was made. You often spend 10 minutes finding a person, and then you spend the next 10 years <laughs> trying to fire them. So you know, <laughs> that, that, that process of, of getting the most out and, and helping your, your employees uh, grow starts at the very beginning. 
Yeah, you're right. I think um, there, there's a book out even uh, about marriage, which uh, can, there, there's a lot of uh, parallelisms there with uh, bringing somebody onto your team. But I think it, it, the title of it is, I love you, you're perfect, now change. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of times we, we do that with our uh, with our team members when we bring them on. And, um, and, and it is something that we have a very specific way that we hire and that that is really designed to make sure that we bring people on for the long run and not do this cyclical hire have somebody on he doesn't perform well he doesn't align with the company let's find somebody else and and then it's hiring out of crisis instead of hiring um out of uh out of strategy and uh and and fitment so what i hear you saying is you need to know what your values are first and you need to have those defined as your company and then you need right. to, you need to kind of have a picture of what someone looks like that would be a good fit for you right and i think the the, the way i look at everything when when we're looking at employee appraisals and that coaching session is that it needs to start with the hiring process and this is a this is a constant feedback and partnership with the uh, the team members when we bring them on so you know it's it's interesting i was reading something um something somewhere probably on the internet but we um it, it was talking about you know back in the 60s 70s and 80s there was an there basic an, an unwritten agreement between employees and and employers right mm -hmm. so that unwritten agreement was come in do this specific task i will pay you for that and if you fail to perform at a certain level i will hire somebody else to do that mm -hmm. and that was very company focused um, and there, there was a lot of people that were waiting in line. I remember when I started, and I'm sure Vic, you can, uh, you can attest to this as well, is that when, when I got a job, especially when, when I got out of the military, um, my first job was at a dealership and it was very clear that I was fortunate to have that job and there were 10 people waiting and I would see the applicants roll in on a regular basis because we had a view of the, uh, the manager's office. So fast forward to where we are today and that contract, that unwritten agreement amongst employers of choice especially and, and those that are still living in the 70s and 80s are really um, missing the boat and, and they're struggling with bringing on team members that that agreement is that I have goals as, as a you know potential team member I have goals that I want out of my career and as a company we have goals that we want um, to achieve as a company and we have values we have principles we have non-negotiables we have deal killers capital sins all those sorts of things right and so the interview really takes that form of you know discussing where where do you want to be how would you be able to achieve your goals here at our company and what are our, our goals and how can you help us achieve those so now when you get into a coaching session then that becomes hey when you started here these were your goals and this was these were the goals of the company I told you I would help you get here and help you achieve your goals by doing X Y and Z and you promised that you had the ability and the desire and the drive to help the company in these areas by doing X Y and Z so let's talk about how that's going let's talk about you know the goals of the company how far have we come where are some areas to improve and um, how well am I doing as as an owner, um, you know, as a, as a as a manager at the store level, if they're doing the uh, the coaching session, tell me how how I'm doing. And that really enfranchises that um, that that team member and brings them into a partnership relationship where it is a uh, it is a, a lateral support. Uh, you know, you help me, I help you. Team, um, really, you know, the, the acronym that I love for team is together. Everybody achieves more, right? right? So if we can work together, we'll achieve more than we could individually. So when, when we're having that session, then, then we really are digging deep into what are your goals, um, for your personal lives? What are your goals for your career? And how can this company reach that? And then, then we talk about the, the behaviors and, uh, and some of the things that they can do that, that will um, 
help us as a, as a company move forward and what the potentials are moving forward, you know, the present potentials, um, because, you, you know, when you start out and you look at a goal, there's, you know, one dot here, this is where we're at, and it's a straight line. In, in all actuality, you know, that becomes, you know, achieving that goal is just this really twists and turns and obstacles and um, rivers to cross, all that sort of stuff. So there really isn't no, yep, we, we made another, you know, another another milestone. It's a, a perfect straight line. So so there, the, the idea of, hey, this is where you want to be and let's get there. And we've got, you know, um, a one year, three year, five year, 10 year plan. Um, a year from now, you, re- you really need to reset and say, okay, this is where we were last year. And, uh, you know, have things changed? Are they the same? Are they? Uh, um, are, are, are you moving in a different direction now? You want to be a, an airline pilot instead of a you know a technician or a service advisor, and even if that's the case, then then the question is how do we get? Um, how, how do we help you get there? Right. And is this the place you need to be in order to get there? Is this the best place for you? Um, so so that's for me that whole starting point for employee review needs to start there. So. I, I run into when I talk and I see some of the um, some of the shop owners that really struggle with reviews. Um, they don't have clearly defined purpose. They don't have a clearly defined mission. They don't have clearly defined values, and they don't have clearly defined operating principles. So when they're talking about things, it is a surprise, and that's why. Doug, when when you said, "Hey, look, this is the scariest time of the year," it's not because that you know we have to confront somebody it's really that as a shop owner we're going to be confronted by how well are you running this organization in order for me to uh, be successful yeah when the uh, when the owner has to uh, the owner or the manager has to take some responsibility for the employee's uh, growth and and uh, you know performance that can be a scary thing now a lot right. of people a lot of times I think at least maybe back in the 70s, back in the the old days, people maybe worked hard enough not to get yelled at, and their only incentive was not to lose their jobs. <laughs> How do you change that that mindset at the very beginning? You know, a lot of times people come into an interview and they'll tell you, they'll sound good, they'll be a really good interview. They'll sound like, yeah, this person's saying exactly what I want to hear. How do you mm-hmm. convince them that honesty? Let's be honest up front. How do you know? How do you how do you get the the right things at the beginning? Well, it, it kind of does go into some interview strategies, but um, first of all, when we're when we're ready to bring somebody on to the team, um, we my general manager and I we interview for fit in the company we do find out what their goals are what their values are and um, where they want where where they see themselves fitting into the team and what they can uh, offer us more strategically and qualitatively than than technically because um, I'm, I'm not really interested in doing a, a technical um, assessment with somebody whether they're a service advisor or a, you know a bookkeeper or a technician so that that ends up being kind of our first echelon of how do we bring the proper people in and how do we keep the wrong people out? Then they move over to um, an interview with the store manager and the shop foreman and, uh, and they really assess whether they can sell, whether they can, um, what level of technical proficiency they're at. So, um, so, so that's the, the interview process right now. Um, I think the the second part to your question is how do we create an environment where people feel comfortable and give you a hundred percent instead of their minimum? And, uh, and it's an interesting question. It's a great question. Um, my experience is that you do create clarity. Then you make sure that you walk the walk, talk the talk, right? And then you, um, you reward and recognize for those um, achievements and, and the things that people do that are in line with what you want to see. And, um, you, you know, the, the best example that I like to talk to our leaders about is um, imagine working at an old factory where it's a union factory, you know, back in the 70s. And the, the management comes in and they, they, they have a huge meeting 
on the factory floor and they say, you know what, we are a company of hard workers, driven people, producers. We, we are a company that rewards people that give us 100%. And, it's an, and there's a new newly uh, pulled in employee, right? And he goes back to the floor and he's like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a hundred percent because that's what this company's about. And he starts working hard and somebody says, Hey, stop working so hard. You're making us look bad. And then all of a sudden he, he's, he's got a conflict. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now there, there's no security there. There's no trust amongst that employee. And so now what are they going to do? They're going to hunker down in the foxhole and don't, don't stick your head up or you'll get shot, right? Somebody's going to shoot you. Either management's going to shoot you or, or the, uh, the, the shop foreman or other employees are going to shoot you. So really what we want to see is, you know, Hey, these are the people that we're bringing in. We're bringing in go-getters. We, we reward those values that, uh, in those operating, you know, behaviors that are in line with what we do. And if there's something that isn't in line, we, we don't wait until a yearly performance review. We, we pull them in right away and say, you know, Hey, look, this is where, you know, th this is where we want to be and this is what we're looking for. And um, you're, you're, you know, over here. So talk to me about that. What, what, what do you see and, and really understand where they're at? Then you can together, you can uh, put together a plan. And, and you know, um, St. Francis always, um, he's famous for, you know, at first seek to understand. And, and I think that's the biggest um, mistake or, or the best quality that a, a manager or leader has is that they jump to conclusions is a big mistake based on what they see visually without talking to people or they don't give people what what they they're thinking they don't give their their um they, they reserve their judgment until they do talk to somebody and say hey this is what it feels like to me and this is what i see what do you think what and and maybe not even you know say what you think without clouding so you don't cloud the issue is hey you know we have an issue here what do you see and then when they see what they see then okay yeah this is what i was seeing but i can see what you're seeing so how do we make um, something, or how do we make an improvement that's going to solve this problem? And, and, and I think the word change is extremely scary to people and, and it's got a bad connotation, but we're always looking for an, an area to improve. So we, we make sure that if we do hear somebody say change that we say, no, yeah, no, let's, let's say improvement. Everybody likes things to get better. Um, not necessarily change. So one of the other, um, scary words, uh, dangerous words, I think in, uh, in annual review is annual. It, y you can't wait a year to do this, right? It sounds like it's, it, it's the scariest time of the year. You can't do that. It's got to be an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think if you do do it once a year, then uh, you're setting yourself up for a very long review. <laughs> hey, let's, let's talk about the last 12 months. Instead of, let's talk about the last three months. <laughs> it a very, but also a very long year. If you can wait, wait to adjust their, their course early. You adjust it early versus waiting for the end of the year or whatever right. you do then. Right. And there, there's a, uh, there's a guy, um, for, first of all, you know, Maslow, when you start looking at just employee dynamics, you look at Maslow and uh, and he really asserted that people, you know, first seek security and food, shelter, all that sort of stuff. And, and then a sense of belonging. And then they move up to um, really um, full you know, potential, which is is more of a, an achievement um, level. And, and a guy came after him. A, um, that not very many people know, and his last name was uh, Hertzberg. And what Hertzberg um, found was that in industrial, um, in, in an industrial setting, people have basic um, biological needs, and then they have psychological needs. And the biological needs are things like um, company um, procedures, policies, um, super good relationship with their supervisor, fair pay, um, the proper title. All, all those sorts of things, right? And uh, and and if they don't have any of those, then they just they, they create so much noise that they can't possibly give you a hundred percent. So, let's say a technician that wants to give a hundred percent, but he feels like all he's getting are all the oil changes, and somebody else is getting all the gravy. And so, then uh, you look at that, and that's something that creates so much noise that he feels like, hey, you know, I, there there's no way I feel like the the 
the, the, the level or the playing ground is tilted on me. So our jobs as a, as leaders is to make sure that those are really indifferent. We, we don't want the best dispatching program in the world and spend so much time here, but we don't want something that's going to create noise. Same thing with pay, same thing with supervisors. So then you get into where we're talking about with coaching and reviews, and that those are the basic bio or psychological needs that really light people up, right? So if something on the biological side, you know, the, the dispatching system, if that's, if that's uh, not in good order, right? It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's not solid, um, it can be the source of extreme dissatisfaction. If, um, if, if it's in order, you just want to bring it to where people are indifferent about it. And, uh, and there's a lot of information out there and it, and it was amazing to me when I learned about it a few years ago and, uh, that, that it was out there and, you know, not very many people know about this guy. But, but his, his theories are, are absolutely on track because we, we practice them um, on a regular basis. You move into the psychological needs, and those are the things that light people up. So when you, when you ask somebody, hey, why, did you, why are you looking to leave a company or why did you leave a company? I mean, the, the number one answer that always comes around is I, I didn't feel appreciated. I didn't feel like they even cared that I was there. They, they, they gave me a hard time or all they did was just tell me about all the things I did right. And I do something amazing. And it was just like, yeah, good job, whatever. Um, so appreciation is on is one, one of the, the least expensive things you can do and the most um, impactful things you can do. But then you get into um, giving people increased responsibility, achieving goals, um, having, um, having enfranchisement, you know, having a voice in the company, all these things that psychologically, um, if, if you have that in your company, after you've taken care of and made sure that all the other stuff is taken care of as far as the way your shop is run, then those employees will give you, you know, 110%. And, uh, and if somebody isn't um, happy, then, then, then that's where we start off first is, hey, look, are you okay? Are you having problems with somebody else? Does it feel like, you know, something isn't working right? Do you need a new computer screen, a new lift, whatever? And if all those things are okay, then we start moving into, hey, you know, how do you feel? Do, do you feel like you fit in? Do you feel like, you know, you get recognized for the things that you do? Are you being challenged? And, um, and then, you know, generally, if that is the area then then we look at that and we say hey look you know we've, we've done a lousy job as a leadership team we need to get this right or else we're going to lose a good team member mm -hmm. so um so when we're really looking at that employee review those are the things where we want to kind of stick into stick stick on topic is just say you know hey let's talk about all the psychological stuff that somebody is is uh, really lit up with but first start off with, hey, are all the things that you're looking for there in this company and then move into that. But if you don't um, put that to bed in an employee review or a coaching session, then there's going to be a lot of noise there and they don't care about anything about setting goals or any of this other stuff. They're, they're worried about, you know what, every time a ticket goes out there and it gets dispatched, um, Joe's the favorite, it's not me and there's no way for me to you know, possibly you know, give you my best. Brian, it sounds like you need to have, or, or, or our industry needs to have fewer bosses and more teammates. You know, someone who's not just here looking down on the employees, but here working with the employees. Well, I think you're absolutely right, right? I mean, um, I was watching the, uh, the Avalanche uh, win the second game in the uh, second round last night. Um, in, in overtime, <laughs> right, right after the Nuggets won uh, their their second game, or their fourth game actually. So uh, we don't have a it, lot it, of uh, postseason activity in Northeastern Ohio right now. So you know, you hey, stop with the. But we do in Buffalo. <laughs> we now we do. Yeah. Have you guys heard of a guy named Ernest Biner at all? I don't know if. <laughs> You know, if you start bringing Sorry. up the uh, if you start bringing up the fumble and the drive, we're gonna have to cut you off. That's it. Are, yeah, these Just are very take what we got. We got enough. Me. These are very painful memories for me. Uh, I, I did feel bad for you guys for you know a couple minutes, um, but. Uh, <laughs> The uh, and, and I really wish that you guys wouldn't have fumbled after we went into the Super Bowl and got our got our butt stomped. Yeah, um, that game I'd rather go for see you. 
Well, we should yeah, be a Buffalo yeah, fan nice. here. We can talk about how we know, games <laughs> four, we know yeah. four failures in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just simple football or a, fun, or a field goal. Um, yeah. So, so anyways, when I'm watching these games, you know, you don't you don't see the players um, with the ball out on the three point or or you know um, driving in, looking at the coach asking if they can shoot. They're 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 making those decisions on the team, and the coach is there to uh, to give them feedback and let them know what's going on from their perspective, and and they're asking for feedback too. Hey, what are you running into? Or you know, what, what's that guy doing out there? What do you where do you see some? They collaborate um, during the breaks, and uh, they go back in there, and make some adjustments, and and uh, and that's the way professionals are, right? Um, I'm reading a book right now called uh, Team of Teams by um, General McChrystal, and he was talking about how. Um, uh, how one of the major shifts in the uh, in the war in Iraq and Afghanistan was that they moved the authority down to um, to to their captains to the lowest person that can make a decision um, based on uh, based on the, the situation. And they said as long as it's not illegal or ir- ir- immoral that they were they needed to make the decision down there. They didn't need to send something up you know, five echelons of command to the general and uh, then have it come down because by then, you know, the, the shot, you know, the shot isn't there anymore. You're on the, th- you know, the three point line and mm-hmm. can't make the shot because everybody's, you know, figured out that you got the ball and where you're at. So, uh, so, th- you know, that, that becomes extremely critical. I think when, uh, when, when you're in a position where you do expand to more than one shop because you're no longer the quarterback on a team, you're, you're a coach. And, um, and then when you, you run um, several shops and you're a coach of several teams and you really move more into that, uh, into that ownership position, maybe that you'd see in a, in a professional um, organization where you do have general managers and coaches on, on the uh, more one-to-one basis with the players. And, um, and, and I think, you know, it goes both ways in, in the sense that when they have the ability to make decisions that not only do they learn, they're probably going to make better decisions than you would. Um, and you just, you know, you set those boundaries and you say, hey, look, these these are not decisions that I want you making. Consult me. And these are the decisions that you need to make uh, on the fly. And if something goes wrong, then we'll deal with it. You make sure that you, you know, you don't um, allow somebody to, to put you in a major contract unless you really trust them. Um, but, you know, taking care of a customer, do you give them, you know, a free oil change or take care of their repair? And, and, uh, and if you're worried about that, then set up, set a dollar limit, right? Don't mm-hmm. give away a repair any more than 500 without checking with me. But, um, if it's anything less than $500, go ahead and do it. And, um, and if they do make a bad decision, then you talk about it and you, you, you let them learn about it and let them own the, uh, you know, in, in be, have an mo- entrepreneurial mindset about the situation and then it becomes a true partnership um, where somebody feels like hey um, this is something that I'm, I'm really involved in I have a voice and it's exciting it's challenging it's not just get up sell you know two thousand dollars today and work get it get it done and then go home and uh, I, I remember at the dealership when um, when I, my first eight years there, um, there was a manager there and, and he was extremely, um, flat, right? I mean, the, the organization was extremely flat. He, he, um, allowed me to, to do a bunch of stuff, you know, have my own meetings with my technicians as a shop foreman and, and, uh, make a bunch of decisions, give out spiff money, all sorts of stuff. Right. And sometimes I went out of, out of line and, and, uh, he just say, you know, Hey, look, you can't, you know, you can't do that because of these reasons. And I learned a ton. And, uh, unfortunately he passed away about a year before I left the dealership. But, uh, I remember the stark difference between him and the, the guy that took his place was the, the feeling that, Hey, we're running stuff here. We know what we're doing. Why don't you get out there? Your job here is to fix cars go out there, fix the cars. And when we want your opinion, we'll ask for it. And even when they did ask for my opinion, um, they never, you know, never really seemed to take it in. Right. It it was like, okay, thanks. And then they did whatever they're going to do anyways. So that, you know, in my mind, that was a a real, a huge deciding factor on whether I was going to leave the company and go run my own company or stay with it. And when we want your opinion, we'll give it to you. Right. <laughs> this episode of Shop Owner Solutions is brought to us by Protractor, the premier shop management solution for multi-bay and multi-location shops. 
With dozens of integrations, linear parts, and labor pricing, and great stability, it's no wonder that Protractor has some of the most loyal customers in the industry. Effortlessly manage all aspects of your shop operations with the powerful, easy-to-use, cloud-based solution. Visit ProtractorSoftware.com slash podcast to learn more. And if you mention this podcast, you'll receive one month free. So loyalty uh, is, is, a, is a big word of in this whole discussion that we're having today. What's more important when it comes to the, uh, the review and appraisal process? How you do it or that you do it? Well, you can't get to the how unless you do it, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, if it's done wrong, Doug, I, I think it it, uh, it it creates more problems than it solves. And so, really, you, you have to put some thought into it. And you don't want it to feel like to the employee or the team member. You don't want it to feel like you're just checking the box. Hey, you know, I, I need to do this as, as an owner and I feel an obligation. So let's fill this out. You you do your part. I do my part and we get it off, you know, and, and we move forward. That That's not what you're wanting. What you're really wanting is for them to know. And, uh, and if you don't, that's an issue. But for them to know that you really care about them, that you appreciate them being on the team and that you're here to serve them. And, uh, and to help them do their job and to help them achieve what they want to achieve both uh, on a personal and a career level and, uh, and give them the opportunities to do that. So is there a one-size-fits-all solution to the review process? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. There, there isn't. And, and I think um, those that are struggling with it, they're, they're looking for a form that works best right and um and and there is no form that works best and and so to your point is it that you do it or how you do it um i i I believe even if you sat down with everybody on your team and you didn't document anything which i think would you know wouldn't be ideal but even if you at a minimum you said hey well, let's sit down. Where are you at right now? How's the wife? How's the kids? You know, are are you you know you 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 know making progress? I, I remember you told me that you wanted to uh, buy that new boat or you know um, put on an addition to your house or build a fence or whatever, and, and really taking a personal interest in them um, in their personal lives as well as their professional lives. And spending 15 minutes with somebody, and I, I think that can be done on a regular basis. I, I think that you. Um, you need to on a regular basis stop and talk to somebody and just ask them how things are going and and actually listen right um i i was uh we we were doing a function last night um with our our uh, leaders and one of the shop foremen um he has a, a little um a young boy and and i know that he's a bmx guy and i you know just stopped and i said so how's how's uh things going with your son are you being able to spend some time with him on the weekends and whatnot and he said oh yeah you know we're, we're doing all sorts of stuff and i took him out to the track and i gave him one of them strider bikes he just loves it and and uh and he's a bmx you know a really good bmx rider and and he said yeah he was uh, he was all excited about watching me ride as well and i said well that's great you know great great to see that and great to and uh and, and so just, you know, his eyes lit up when I was asking him about it. And, uh, and, and it really, there's no agenda there, right? It was just, yeah. uh, you know, I like the guy and he's got a little boy and I think that's great. And he takes a, a lot of pride in that. Um, but if, if you don't have that connection, then they do feel like they're the nameless, faceless employee or they're just a cog in the wheel of you achieving your goals. And, uh, and they're just there to serve you. Yeah. So, um, so one of the things that, that I um, try to remind people and, and, uh, really emphasize with the the leadership is that there are four stakeholders in this company and, uh, and, and they support the company itself, right? So you have the team members, you have the customers, you have the vendors, and then you have the, um, the team members, customers, vendors, and, um, oh, I'm sorry. And the, the, um, company itself. Right. And that, and those those are basically four legs on a table. And if any of them, 
become too short or too long, meaning that they get too much attention or not enough attention, the table starts doing this. And so all the decisions that we need to make need to be fair there. And I remind them that I'm part of the team that you know, although I own the company, the company is an entity in itself and I'm part of the team. So I, I, I'm here to do a job. I'm here to serve them. I'm here to serve, you know, the, the bank that wants me to make, you know, make payments to them. I'm, I'm here to serve the government and pay taxes and all those sorts of things in order to make sure that they have the opportunity to come to a workplace that um, has a great environment that's secure and that's uh, healthy and strong. And so when somebody says you're the company, you know, I, I disagree with that. I say, no, I'm not the company. I'm, a, I'm another t- team member here and I'm here to do my job. And um, and yeah, I have the, 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 the authority to hire and, and let somebody go. But, you know, to, to lean on that as a company owner and a leader is, is extremely weak. Right. I mean, it just shows so much weakness to say, you know what, do it my way or you're fired. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, it, it, I think the best ways that we've let people go in the past are leading them down the path that you don't fit into this organization. You should be somewhere else and I want to help you get there. And, you know, and, and it's amazing how often when you sit down, you have a conversation and you say, Hey, this, this, and this is happening. These are the values of our company. This is what we believe in. And when you behave this way, it doesn't feel like you believe in that. So, is this really a good place for you? Um, because this is going to create problems, you know, forever, unless you decide that you're going to act in a way that aligns with our values and, and helps us get where we want to go. And man, I've, I've had just a lot of um, guys in the past where we've made a mistake hiring, right? I mean, it was a hiring mistake and, and, or somebody, you know, f- filled us up, told us all the things that we wanted to hear. And then, then we realized that the behavior um, told the real story. And they, they just look and they say, yeah, you know what? I don't think I do feel here, uh, fit here. And, and we ask, well, what are you going to do? And they say, well, you know, I'm going to go find another job. Well, okay, well, let me help you do that. And, uh, and, and, you know, unless they've stolen from the company or done something, you know, really terrible, you know, or, you know, done, you know, alcohol, been drunk on the job or something like that. And even then there's, there's some, you know, things that you need to handle it the right way and, and give them help. Um, if they're doing something, you know, um, you know, chemical based, but you know, the, the, the point is that, um, our goal when somebody leaves the company is that they leave with a hug and a handshake and, uh, and send them on their way. And there's, there's, there's a lot of ways to make, uh, um, to make enemies. I don't know if enemies the right ways, but, or to have people that uh, that aren't your friends in this industry, and the people that are truly your friends, and the people that say good things about those are hard to come by. And so, you know, the more of those people you have out there talking about how you, you did things right, the easier the hiring process is um, for one. And the uh, the more you find people that. Uh, that, that recommend you to other people that do fit into your company because they understand and say, hey, you'd make a good fit there. We get a lot of referrals for that. So, um, so sorry, I feel like I, I, I went off track there a little bit, but I, no, you know, that's, I'm that's great. I'm going to, before we conclude like though, I'm going to throw Vic on the hot seat here. Okay. Vic, looking back at your time as a, a shop owner, mm-hmm. how would you rate your, um, you know, do you look back at your, uh, you know, your appraisal pro- uh, methods, your, you know, your interactions in that way with, uh, with pride or with regret? So in the early days, with, re- with regret, because I was that guy that didn't know how to do a review. And then the next tier was I, I did them poorly. But then I was exposed from the coaching standpoint, like Brian, you know, a, 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 it was an appraisal. It was a coaching process. It wasn't always what you did bad. It was how can we enhance what you're doing? How can we make you a better teammate? So when I, I look back on my later days, I look at it with great pride because I had I, I understand the value of input, positive and negative, and and that like like Brian talked about the psychological component of it. And I I think that. A shop owner should start doing their reviews, but continue to improve them and get to get to the point of coaching. So, yeah. long answer to a short question. Absolutely. So summing up. Summing up. So Brian, there's a lot of stuff we could continue to talk about, but let's go ahead and wrap up this episode. We'll, we will have you on going going forward because there's a, some questions in here I want to ask you about rewards and peer peer 
the pure component of it. But let's talk about takeaways from today. So it's, as you said, it's not the 60s, 70s, or 80s. It's, you know, it, we need to approach this from a team mentality. They are team members and approach the, the appraisal as a performance re review as a true coaching session. And it's a, it needs to be a two-way dialogue. As an owner, you want feedback as much as you want to be able to give input. Aligning yourself with the, the teams, team members that you bring on, aligning their values with their values brings on a, a good team member. And you, you want to have mutual goals. You need to have clearly defined aspects and be clear about your message in the shop. You need to live by example and reward results and behavior. Well, one of the things that you said I, li I really liked was seek to understand. Don't just jump to conclusions. And you use the coaching approach to improve versus change. Empowerment, empower your employees throughout, throughout the process. Leadership at the lowest level. I heard, heard you say that you want leadership at the low, lowest level. You don't want to be. You don't want to be the bottleneck. So the employer and employee relationship is reciprocal. Utilizing performance reviews as a coaching session will strengthen you, your team, and your company. I think that's about it. Great. Yeah. Now, our guest up. today. I'm, our guest today has been Brian Bates with Legal Automotive, and the episode was brought to us by Protractor, the premier shop management solution for multi-bay and multi-location shops. With dozens of integrations, linear parts, and labor pricing, and great stability, it's no wonder the Protractor has some of the most loyal customers in the industry. Effortlessly manage all aspects of your shop operations with its powerful, easy-to-use cloud-based solution. Visit protractorsoftware.com slash podcast to learn more. Mention this podcast and receive one month free. Again, Brian, thanks for uh, reminding us that appraisals aren't just a chance to complain about each other. They're really a chance to grow. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate being on the show. Glad, glad to have you, Brian. Yep. And if you've got questions, suggestions, or, or just want to – Talk to us at Shop Owner Solutions. You can contact me at dkoffman at babcox.com or vic at vic at shopownercoach.com. Thanks again, Brian. We'll talk to you later.